Psalms, chapter 1. Blessed, happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor standeth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does or doeth shall prosper. You know, Christians are likened to trees. And there is many different kinds of family of trees. And one particular group of trees that Christians should be, and many are not, are fruit-bearing trees, and that would include the nuts. Jesus said, wherefore by their fruits you should know them. Now Israel is known as the fig tree. Jesus came up to the fig tree seeking figs, and there was no fig. There was no fruit. He cursed that tree to death. In another parable, he said, Listen, I've come to this tree. I'm looking for fruit. There's no fruit. And the caretaker says, Well, let me dung it. Let me spread fertilizer. And if it's well, it'd be well. If it's not, we'll cut it down. God expects the Christian to produce fruit. There are Christians... They have no fruit. There are Christians who have once bared fruit and stuff. They are in the winter of their life. And yet there is no winter for the Christian life or always to be living, always producing. For God. Our fruit in it has a seed to produce other trees, other Christians. Paul says, I have planted, follows water, but God gave the increase. What you plant is the seed inside the fruit that comes from the tree. Many Christians, they're saved, they're going to heaven. They're not happy. Because they can't fulfill Psalm chapter 1. Because Psalm chapter 1 starts off with the blessed man. After reading 42 chapters about Job. And his trials and his problems and those three friends. We come blessed is the man. With instruction on how to be happy. Happy means blessed. And the very first thing is you do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Now we've got to live in this world. We've got to survive in the, in the world and the people in the world. But we don't have to walk with them. I can work with the world and work with a worldly employer and, and worldly un Christian like people. And I don't have to go their way. I don't have to do their Christmas party. I don't have to go out Friday night and party with them. I don't have to partake in their sporting events. And the times I did work when they got their, their little thing and when I worked for the newspaper, they always got these stupid kind of scams and stupid things. And well, Stanley, you don't do it. I'm not going to do it. It's not right. I'm not here for games. I'm here to do a job. And the problem is today is in the churches, the Christian churches, there's the worldliness, there's the garbage, there's the council of the ungodly. All are welcome. You can't escape it from the church anymore. The world is going into the, 
Listen, you be like, you know, you work all all week in the world, and you you're, you're trafficking with all the world, and you go to the grocery store, and you hear the worldly music, and, and it's just a dog eat dog world out there. And you're supposed to go to church and get out from the world, and they get into contemporary music. You get the preacher up there; he's all excited about his sports team. This family's all excited. Next weekend, we won't be in church because we're going to. Amusement park land. And this Christian is deceiving this Christian or, on, or ungodly people. And the talk in the church house is anything but about Jesus. And that church thinks they're happy. That Christian thinks he happy, he's happy. Yet yeah, we're in the world. But the world hates our Jesus. We've got the counsel of the Holy Spirit. We're to walk right. We're to walk holy. We're to be examples. We're to show them the way, the gospel, the truth. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. That doesn't mean that, you know, you are a roadblock. That means the sinners walk a broad way. The Christian walks the narrow way. We're not to be going the way of destruction and sin. We ought not to be bringing our families as Christians into the road of alcoholism and tobacco. Our children ought not to be suffering for food because we want to get a tattoo. We're hooked on drugs. Our family should not be destitute of the father because he wants to go out on Father's Day night to gamble the horses, a men's night out. Where I come from, Connecticut, the women went off to bingo at the casino. The fathers go this way, the mothers go this way, and the children go that way. And it's a way of sinner. There is no righteousness. Our lives today are destroyed. And I'm not talking about the lost. I'm talking about Christians. They're not happy. Because they're walking with the ungodly. They're in the way of sinners. Nor sin is in the seat of the scorn. But I'm, I'm a street preacher. I'm a public ministry witness to the lost and to the saved. And I have had Christians or professing Christians with their buddies mock me. For trying to get the gospel up. And I've even known Christians in a church that I'm in. Mock and scorn. I was street preaching last week. And I heard there was some, some Christians. They didn't like it. Jesus does. There are Christians that stand in the scornful company, and usually the scorn is against God, Jesus, and the Word. That's not going to make you happy. But his delight, in contrast, is the law of the Lord. And today, the law of the Lord is 66 books in the King James Bible. You're not happy because you don't have the King James. You don't have the Word of God. You have a Bible that has been chopped and raised and cut and added, subtracted. I know, listen, every day is not the same day. There will be some days i got to read. I forgot to read. Yeah, even I had that. 
But most often is it, oh, I can't wait to open the Bible. What am I going to read today? Yeah, I know, I, I, listen, the Bible I've read all the way through. The 66 books since 2000. I don't know how many times. Today I open up my Bible, Psalms chapter 1. I don't know how many times I read Psalms 1. Here I am giving you a lesson about Psalms 1. It's my delight. I sat here and said, Lord, it's Friday. Well, I don't have nothing in my head. I don't have anything in my heart. Psalms 1 was up on my screen. Okay. Do you delight in the Word of God? The Word of God. Not a book about the Bible. Now, there's nothing wrong with little calendar pages and you know, verse of the day. There's nothing wrong with that. But do you meditate? Because look, and the law does he meditate day and night. Do you think about it? Do you digest? Do you pray? Do you seek the living word of God? That is your delight. If your delight is in the Word of God, then you are blessed. Your counsel won't be what the ungodly. The ungodly don't want the Word of God. And the problem is there are Christians out there. They're saved. As much as I am, they don't have delight in the Word. They are in the ungodly crowd. I have something right now. I mean, there, there's two main events in my life right now. I am praying for two ones. Today, one of them, which could be two possibilities, one or two, one. Or, Lord, I need your answer from the Bible, yay or nay. And there are people that go to an unsaved person. They'll go ask a person who doesn't even know what God has to say. Should I invest my money in stocks and bonds? Should I remortgage my house? Why not ask God? He knows what to, you're asking people who don't know what tomorrow, never mind the rest of the day is. And then they don't go through the Word of God. There are Christians, they're saved, and they go the path of the sinner. Well, the sinner does not open the Bible. There are sinners that go to church today, a Baptist church, and they don't even bring a Bible to church. I know a pastor that doesn't even bring his Bible to, to, to the pulpit. And the other day, he, I don't even know what verse I quoted this from. Ought to be out of the King James you ain't happy. Because the Bible says, blessed is the man that does not go the way of the ungodly. Modern Bibles are the way of the ungodly because we don't like what God said. The way of the sinner is, I'm not carrying a Bible. And sit in the, in the seat of the square. That guy over there, you know, he's King James only is him. I love the Word of God. I mark my Bible. I enjoy it. It helps me more focus on the words. I'm truly blessed. I'm truly in delight. He shall be like a tree. Here's the tree planted by rivers of water. That's what a tree needs. Jesus said he's the water of life. If there's any waters of the ungodly, the sinners, or the scornful, it's troubling flood waters. For the man of God, the Christian who's doing right, it's a river of water. It's a tree planted by the river, and you can sit along that, that tree, 
along that river an afternoon or a morning and you just sit back and just let things go by. Maybe there's a couple frogs or even see fish. The birds are up in the air. There goes an elephant cloud. There goes a pup. I remember I was a kid with my friend Kevin and we sit. We just look at the clouds. Try to guess what that cloud looked like. It's healthy for a tree to be of water. When he's got no water, he has no life. And he does not have the water of life. He has no life. He will face the judgment of God. The judgment of God is that John the Baptist said, if the axe will come, he'll be placed in the fire. Jesus said, any tree that doesn't bring forth fruit, now this is not for the Christian, will be cast into the fire. For the Christian, a Christian that never does not produce fruit, he won't be put in a fire, but, you know, he'll have wood, hay, or stubble. He won't have a reward. That bringeth forth his fruit in the season. Now, a tree does not bring fruit all year round, unlike the tree of life. There'll be times in a Christian life you are in a winter. Your leaves have fallen off, it's cold. You're trying to go through this cold, miserable winter. You're still alive. Many Christians today are like that. They're in the winter. But they never get to the spring. The spring is when that snow melts, and in that snow there's, there's treasures of nitrogen and, and fertilizer and water. And the taste of spring, the tree starts budding, the leaves start coming out, the birds come. Try to, it's time to start growing again. And even this time, you're not ready for fruit, but you're producing buds. Then you got to endure the, the, the heat and the blast of summer. You got water. You got the water of life. The fire has been turned up, but you're still living. You, you got Jesus taking care of you with the water of life. There are many Christians who dry up and die because they can't take the heat. There are many Christians who have died in the winter. They can't take the cold. There are many Christians that God said, all right, just chop the tree down. There's no fruit. He's just being. That's what he's being. Chop them down. And then there are trees that, trees that produce fruit, and God's like, all right, remove the dead limb. I, I really don't think that limb should be there. I think that limb is going to affect the fruit this year. And they get the axe, and they get the saw, and they chop off that sin. They chop off that person, and they get rid of that activity. And they want to be a finer and better fruit-bearing tree for the Lord. And if you want to be a blessed, happy tree, you got to remove some of the stuff on you that's dead. It's not going to produce. There are branches on trees. All they do is steal the nutrients. They steal the water and they don't produce nothing. They got to be trimmed. They got to be cut. And that don't feel good. There are trees they come up to during the winter. Oh, the storm's rolling. Look, look, this branch is broken. Maybe if we put it back in there, we tape it up, maybe it'll survive. You go walking through an apple orchard, as I've had in Connecticut, and you look around, here's these trees, and they got apples, they got fruit. But here's a, it's not a dead tree, it's a stump, it's gone. 
That tree did not produce any fruit. That tree gave up fruit. Would not produce any more fruit. That tree died. They cut the whole thing down. Because we don't want it to affect the trees that are producing fruit. You might be in the church. You might be with... You're with Christians. But they're robbing you. They're stealing you. Of your water. Of your sunlight. Of your nutrients of the ground. Of being your full capacity. For, you, you, there's some people you guys say, hey, that's it. You may have to say to your church, hey, you know what? This church is not good enough. I got to go to another place. I got to get into another orchard. His leaf shall not wither. You need a leaf. And there's so much the leaf can do. Up in New England during the fall, those leaves are beautiful. Bright colors. You find them on calendars and postcards. Pictures. You ought to be a fruit producing Christian for the Lord. He ought to be a beautiful tree. He ought to be part of the scenery of other Christians. And we're at the time of fall. Show your beauty of Jesus. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Paul is a tree long dead. But you know he's still producing fruit. The beauty of his epistles. That if you were to use today. Scripture from Romans. Philemon. Galatians. Corinthians. If you were to use scripture and someone gets saved from the writings of Paul or Peter or James or John, that is seed that came from a fruit, that came from a fruit, that came from a fruit that came all the way back from Peter, James, or John or the apostles of Jesus, the disciples of Jesus, and Jesus himself. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. You never see a tree out there. Oh, I gotta get through. Oh, I gotta get through. Oh. They never struggle. It comes natural. It's unnatural for a Christian at any time of the season. To be a dead living tree. Okay, I know you're resting in this in the winter. Well, you're still trying to do something. You're fighting the cold. Though a tree in the winter, it's still living. And there are Christians, they're living. They're saved, but they won't come to spring. They're not going to survive the, the, the heat of the summer. And they're not going to have any beauty in the fall. They're not happy. Because they're with the ungodly. Though we're still sinners, they are a sinner with the sinner. And they scorn. And they have no delight in the word. They know more about the world and the sports and the, and the movies and the actors and all that 
Then they know about the 12 tribes of Israel, the disciples of Jesus, the missionary journeys in the churches of Paul. Not only do they know the ideas of the book of Revelation, they know the book of Revelation. And they're out there trying to tell people the gospel. They're trying to get people to know Jesus, to be saved. They're trying to help other Christians grow. They're pulling the weeds around that tree. Hey, these weeds don't need to be around you. They're stealing your water. They're, ste they're stealing. Hey, this tree that's growing big and tall, it has no fruit. It's it's blocking your sunlight. You gotta get you gotta move. And I know trees don't move, but we do. And anything that prevents us to get into the water of, of light, anything that prevents us from getting into the light of the world, to get those nutrients, to get that feeding, to get what we need to grow as a tree and be a wonder to God and fruit bearing for God. To be happy and to be delighted. There's some vegetation, there are some people, even Christians, there are places that, you know what, we do not need to be we do not need to be there. We do not need to associate ourselves. We've got to move. And if you want to be a tree that's blessed and delight, you're going to find yourself a tree that you're going to be all by yourself. You're going to be a tree on the mound. All by, you're not going to be in the forest. But God's going to look down and say, that's my tree. I'm pleased with that tree. That's a well done tree. What about the other Christians? They're in that forest. We're going to have to get the rapture just to... You know what I mean? 